Johnny Depp, Narcissist or Empath, Part 23. The final section, addressing Johnny Depp's behaviours and characteristics, with further evidence for you to consider, as we head towards the final determination of what he is. Heard completed her testimony, which included several photographs and audio recordings. She testified that by early 2016, Depp's substance abuse had escalated, that he began to experience hallucinations of people who were not there, and accuse Heard of saying things she had not. This, of course, would be commensurate with excessive drug consumption, but given that she's a narcissist, was she using the truth? Or... Was this a revision of history? Either way, if it's accurate that the substance abuse had escalated, irrespective of what it was causing him to accuse her of, the fact is that this substance abuse might show a dereliction of responsibility commensurate with the behaviour of a narcissist, somebody with no or reduced emotional empathy, or is it again simply a man in the grip of his addiction? Heard testified that the violence was now normal and not the exception, and feared that if she did not file for divorce, she wouldn't survive. I believe he would have taken it too far, and I wouldn't be here. She testified that on her birthday in April 2016, she and Depp had a fight, where they shoved each other before Depp threw a champagne bottle on a painting, pushed me to the ground, and grabbed me by the pubic area before leaving. Physical violence and sexual assault, if she's to be believed. She denied that she had anything to do with the feces in Depp's bed the following morning, instead stating that it was caused by the dog who had bowel control problems. She claimed that Depp was obsessed with the idea that she was the culprit and that it was what they had been discussing in May 2016 when she alleges the last violent incident took place. She testified that Depp hit her, threw her phone at her face and grabbed her by the hair before her friend Raquel Pennington and Depp's security team intervened. Heard explained that she did not cooperate with the police officers who were called because she wanted to protect Depp and didn't want the abuse to become public. Photos were shown to jurors, which appeared to show red marks and swelling on Heard's face. The jury was also shown a text message from Depp where he appeared to apologise for the incident. If she's to be believed that that, act, that incident took place, again, is this the assertion of control as a consequence of a perceived threat to that control by a narcissist using rudimentary physical violence? Alternatively, is it the case that this is once again a man who's in the grip of addictions, causing him to have reduced emotional empathy for his then wife and resulting in those behaviours? Might you conclude that those behaviours go beyond somebody that would be in the grip of an addiction and is more linked to the narcissistic need for control and an absence of emotional empathy? The issuing of the apology. Is this an individual that apologises but it's false contrition because he's a narcissist? Or is it the case that he is prone to these outbursts but thereafter his contrition is genuine? That in the moment he loses control influenced by external stresses, but then shows genuine emotional empathy for his conduct, or rather for the person affected by his conduct thereafter. Tillett Wright, Heard's friend, testified in a video deposition that she'd never seen Depp abuse Heard, but that Heard had told her about it. He'd become friends with Depp after Heard introduced them and stated that Depp had discussed his substance abuse with him, telling Wright about his jealousy in previous relationships that had led to drinking and rage. It's clear that there is a strong trait of jealousy stroke envy, which is a narcissistic trait in Depp. This can exist in an empathic individual so long as those empathic traits are able to contain it. It appears that frequently Jep's jealousy and envy cannot be contained. The question remains, is this because his empathic traits are reduced as a consequence of an external stressor, provocation, abuse, his uh, intoxication? Or is it the case that that trait, along with others, are simply extremely strong because they outrank his empathic traits, meaning he's narcissistic, or there are no empathic traits there to keep them in check because he's a narcissist? Wright also testified that Depp could become verbally dismissive of Heard when under the influence, and that Depp had told Wright after marrying Heard that I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. Exhibition of the absence of emotional empathy 
because there's none there, or simply because it's been eroded by an external stressor. Wright said he was no longer friends with Deb after 2015. He testified about the May 2016 incident, saying that he'd been on the phone with Heard when he'd heard a bang and heard screaming, with Depp saying, you think I hit you? Wright said that he hung up and called Heard's neighbour, and then 911. Raquel Pennington, Heard's former friend who lived in one of Depp's penthouses in the Eastern Columbia building, testified in a video deposition that she saw, that she saw injuries on Heard on multiple occasions, and that Heard had to use makeup to cover them. Pennington testified that she had seen cuts to Heard's feet following her rape in Australia, and that she'd taken images of injuries to Heard's face and skull after the incident in December 2015. She said that in May 2016, when Heard alleges that Depp assaulted her for the last time, she intervened in their fight. Pennington testified that she had heard yelling outside the apartment, and upon entering saw Depp yelling at Heard, who asked Pennington for help. Pennington testified that she stood between them and sheltered Heard with her body while Depp continued yelling at her and then destroyed some items in the apartment before his security arrived. Application of verbal violence and destruction of property is a manifestation of ignited fury or again is this the addiction at work. Pennington testified that the image taken of Heard that night accurately described how she looked then and had not been altered. She stated that she had been worried about Heard's physical safety and that Depp may unintentionally hurt her worse than intended. Joshua Drew, who was Pennington's husband at the time, testified in a video deposition that Depp smashed a bottle against the door to his apartment and burst in, approaching Drew in an aggressive way, screaming, cursing, spitting in my face in the aftermath of the May 2016 incident. He described Heard as catatonic and that he asked Drew to talk to the police and that she did not want to report the incident. Elizabeth Mars, Heard's acquaintance who had been visiting Pennington at the time of the incident May 2016, testified in a video deposition that she had been frightened by Depp, who had charged at her and appeared to be intoxicated. She also stated that Heard looked like she had been hit. It would appear that these behaviours were taking place under the influence of intoxication. But is this merely a layer on top of narcissistic behaviour, or is it the prime cause? And in any event, Depp behaving in this manner, the intoxication was this without provocation and demonstrates that he has a repeated failure to address his addictions, resulting in reduced emotional empathy. The fact that he can't be bothered or won't or doesn't believe that he should address his addictions mean that he doesn't have emotional empathy for other people or it's reduced and that he shows a lack of accountability. Whitney Henriquez, Heard's younger sister, who testified in person, stated that she had witnessed a physical altercation between Depp and Heard in March 2015, about which she had been asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement. She testified that the couple had started shouting horrible things at each other after Depp admitted to having an affair, and that Depp threw Red Bull can at, a Red Bull can at Debbie Lloyd, his personal nurse. Enriquez said Depp had then hit her in the back, prompting her to hit him, and that Depp had then grabbed her by the hair and started to repeatedly hit her before his security intervened. Enriquez testified that Depp also destroyed items belonging to her in the adjoining penthouse. Separately, she testified about Depp holding their Yorkshire Terrier out of the window of a moving car and threatening to microwave the dog in another incident. He had thrown a steak knife at his assistant. All manifestations of the ignition of fury, the absence of emotional empathy and rudimentary attempts at manipulation, or once again simply the crazed behaviours of a man struggling under his addictions. Enriquez said that drinking turned Depp angry and abusive, and that he would control what Heard would wear to events. Enriquez stated that she had seen bruises on Heard, and that as the relationship progressed, Heard lost weight, became withdrawn, and began to experience insomnia. Under cross-examination, Depp's lawyer questioned Enriquez about her taking cocaine with Depp, and joking with him about hitting Heard in a text. Enriquez said that the text was unfortunate, joking, and that she was not aware of the situation at the time. Melanie Inglesis, Heard's makeup artist, testified in a video deposition how she had used makeup to hide Heard injuries in December 2015 before her appearance at the Late Late Show with James Corden, asshole. She described Heard having discoloration under her eyes and on the bridge of her nose, and a split lip, and that she was missing a clump of hair. Christina Sexton, Heard's former acting coach and friend, 
you obviously not a very good one, testified in a video deposition that, they, that Depp was critical and demeaning of Heard's career choices and that the couple's relationship was very tension-filled towards the end. Sexton testified that during a 2013 weekend trip, when Heard alleges that Depp assaulted her, she witnessed a heated argument between the couple and that the next morning the couple's trailer was completely torn apart. Sexton denied seeing Depp act violently towards Heard, but on one occasion said, I saw him coming at her, and that's when the bodyguard stepped in. She further testified that Heard had lost a worrying amount of weight towards the end of the relationship and had begun to miss sessions or turn up crying to them. That concludes the body of evidence, mammoth as it is. As I've explained, I haven't included everything. In certain instances, it would merely duplicate a point that has already been made. And what I've sought to do is cover the major points that have arisen in Depp's life, enabling you to hear all of this evidence. I've also demonstrated how individual instances can be interpreted a number of different ways depending upon circumstances. I will now consider this huge body of evidence. Consider the veracity of the evidence. Consider the multiplicity of behaviours where they've occurred with a view to making a determination as to whether Johnny Depp is a narcissist, whether he's narcissistic, whether he's a normal, or whether he's an empath. I will be providing this in an extempore explanation in a live stream later today. That has been advertised in the conclusion video. And prior to that, consider all of the evidence that I have taken you to. Consider the factors that have occurred. Consider what you understand about narcissism, the erosion of emotional empathy, the presence of emotional empathy, how external stressors work, how narcissists function through my vast body of work. And then make your own determination as to what you think Johnny Depp is and then receive my expert analysis. I look forward to you joining me at 9pm UK time for the final determination of what Johnny Depp is. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>